thanks for coming out today. Um, well, really, really good to have this young lady back with us. And, um, you know, just really proud of our, our team. I think winning in this league is really hard. Winning on the road is, is extraordinarily hard. And um, I just thought we showed a lot of great resiliency and, uh, you know, we just battled. It wasn't a, you know, one of our uh, probably cleaner games. Um, but I think a lot of times in the SEC, the, the physicality, the athleticism, uh, sometimes it's just not going to be pretty basketball and you've got to find a way to fight through those possessions. And I thought uh, our team did a really nice job of that. Coach, uh, in reviewing some of the film, what did you like about the last three minutes or so and the way you guys pulled away? We made shots. <laughs> um, you know, obviously she made a big shot. Um, we had uh, Judd hit a big three in the corner. Um, but I just... It, I think we've got a lot of veterans on the court uh, that have been in the fires and um, you know I think we've learned and you know, have grown from those situations over the years and I just felt like um, their just their disposition how they carried themselves it was very poised um, they understood what needed to happen what we needed to get done and um, you know we just we battled we got stops and and made some baskets and and um, didn't get too high didn't get too low and just stayed the course and showed great resiliency. Mama, so. for you, just what was it like kind of trying to get back here and what was the emotions that you had knowing that you were going to miss that first SEC game? Um, it was really difficult, especially because I didn't have control over anything and I just didn't know what was going to happen. So definitely really hard. Um, I, was, I was sad because I love this team and I just wanted to be there for them and I just feel like it would also help me to grow and understand that there are things that you don't control and the way you react is, is going to change a lot. So I just I just took it step by step and tried to be positive. I think we all saw the video of you being reunited with the team. <laughs> so what was that moment like for you? It was amazing, honestly. I, I lied to them. Um, I texted them and I was like, just go get that one for me. Um, I wish I, I could be there and everything. So, <laughs> <laughs> of course, I knew um, I was going to be there for them. And I think it was really cool. And I was just so happy to be there. Um, when you, you look at the way your team is playing defensively and you talk about you know gutting out a win on the road, does it, does it all kind of start there? And where have you seen your team make the biggest strides defensively this year? Oh, it's, it 100% starts there. Um, and we've been working on these defensive breakdowns for seven months. And so it's really, um, I think, rewarding to see um, just the execution. Uh, again, you're not gonna, we're not going to play perfect. We're going to have some breakdowns. Um, you know, we're going to not always execute the best, but you definitely want the majority of your possessions to be well executed on the defensive end. And, um, you know, we talk about this a lot, but being your sister's keeper and, you know, just understanding next man up's got to put out fires. And I think we've got more possessions when we're doing that than when we're not. And I think that's really huge in SEC play. And so uh, for me, it's, um, you know, it's just our rotations defensively and, really being our sister's keeper that I think has improved tremendously. You know, we still struggle at times with our first steps, some of us keeping people in front of us. And again, it's not going to be a perfect game, but you've got to have each other's backs. And I feel like that's the thing that stands out the most to us. Is there anything that like, whether you saw it in practice or in a game that was kind of that, aha, hey, it's clicked, like they've got it, they're, they're really doing what we're trying to do? Yeah, I think it's been a work in progress, um, but I do think, uh, you know, we take time after games and break down clips of when we were really are, our sister's keeper and the rotations, and, you know, you scramble out of different scenarios uh, and what that looks like and feels like versus times when we just get distracted or, um, you know, get caught up in guarding our own man and we're not there for that help rotation. and. Uh, usually that results in something not so good happening for us. So I, I think over the last several months, it's been a work in progress. I don't know that one day you just flipped a light switch and we're, like, we're there. Um, and we still got a lot of work to do, but I'm seeing a lot of really good things defensively. Robin, obviously it wasn't probably in the original game plan not to have Mama for SEC play starting up. Just what have you seen from Caitlin stepping into that starting role? Yeah, no, that definitely was not in the game plan. Um, but I'm really proud of the way she handled it. And, you know, we don't talk about this yet, but, I mean, 
this young lady was just exhausted. I mean, she is completely jet lag, different time zone. Um, just, you know, she, her eyes were bloodshot in the middle of that game. Um, you know, it was just, but she wanted to do whatever she could do to help our team. And uh, she understood what she brought to the table. So I'm so proud of just her toughness and, and her understanding that we, you know, we need her and, and uh, she was willing to step to the plate for us. But um, going back to your question about Caitlin, um, you know, well, she's, she's got a high basketball IQ. Um, I think a lot of things that she does doesn't always show up in that box score yet. Um, she's a really good defender. Uh, she's long. She gets a lot of deflections. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, offensively plays with great pace, uh, pretty shifty with the ball. It's not like she's explosive, uh, but shifty and, and finds a way just, um, you know, to – to get to the rim and, and to create shots for other people. Um, I just think her game experience, her basketball IQ, and her selflessness. You know, I think again to her, it's she doesn't get caught up if I'm starting or if I'm not starting. I mean, she was a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school. Um, she was a top 25 kid in the country. You know, a lot of times people would be all in their feelings. Am I starting? Am I not? Where's my rotation? But again, I'm going to give props to this team because collectively in that locker room, it's just not about that. And I know I'm really blessed as a coach to have that kind of mindset. Um, but they're whatever it takes for the front of the jersey uh, from top to bottom. And I think that is one of the coolest things about this team. Where, where you obviously had the jump from non-conference to conference play. Just what did you see pace-wise? Anything that was different that stood out to you? Um, the players are definitely longer, faster, more physical, but I feel like I have really good teammates and they're always there like during games, you know, helping me when I need it, you know. I feel like they did a great job of kind of like preparing us freshmen for like, you know, you guys need to be ready when you get in there because it's going to be physical and stuff. So I'd say those three are the main things. Hey, Avery, what's it, what's it been like to go maybe from your early days back in the summer or beginning of the season where there might have been a surreal feeling? To putting on that jersey to mm -hmm. several months later, SEC play. And I would imagine there's been a, a transition from, oh my God, I'm here, <laughs> to, um, to hitting a shot like that and playing the way you're playing. Yeah, I mean, Mizzou's always been my dream school. Like, I've wanted to come here since I can remember. So definitely when I got here, you know, any little thing would just be like the coolest thing. Like, first time walking in Mizzou Arena was like, oh my gosh. First time being in the locker room was just really cool. But I think, you know, it's one of those things, the more times you get in, you know, those situations, it becomes more normal. And I feel like, you know, it's starting to become routine. You know, I've been through some games and stuff. So it's definitely nice to get a more, like, normal feel with this and not everything be so like inner or like I don't get as nervous I guess as I did in the beginning. Sophie and Lindsay are around a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean they're they're at games that you know you see them around. You ever lean on them? I don't know if, if what the relationship is like with, with them. They've been through the same thing. Yeah it's really nice. Both of them are amazing. I can't say enough good things about them and it's just always nice because you know We've been through a lot of the same things for like through high school and then of course you know they both came to Mizzou also so they're always just you know great mentors to have they're willing to answer any questions for you and they're just really good leaders and passing on what knowledge they have down to us. Robin what's that been like seeing her kind of go through that transition maybe a little wide-eyed at the beginning to you know getting down to business I guess you might phrase it. Yeah really proud of her um, I think it's um it, freshman year is hard, um, and you got to really keep your blinders on, and you can't compare your journey to anybody else's journey because it's just so uniquely different for every individual. And sometimes it's not even about what you're doing, but it's about what other people are doing around you. And so that freshman year is so hard, and um, I just really respect and admire uh, her steadfastness. And, you know, every day she comes to practice, and she works really, really hard one of the best motors I've ever been around. Every day, physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, verbally, always talking. And days when you know she's frustrated or disappointed or wants more, because human nature is you're a competitor and you want to be out there, right? You want to contribute. But she's never made it about her. Um, I think there was an opportunity in that non-conference when Mama broke her nose that we were hoping to get more extended minutes for Avery to kind of get her feet wet. And then she went down with an ankle sprain, worked really, really hard to get back, and they came back at the same time. And so it was just hard as a coach to figure out when and how to get her minutes, but we knew we needed to. 
Uh, so she just stayed patient, um, not satisfied, but patient in regards to team first and kept working hard. And we kept trying to remind her to stay ready so you don't have to get ready and trust the process and your time's gonna come. And it's just cool when you really take ownership of that as a player, as I mean, shows great maturity uh, for that age to be able to do that. And so um, she brings a lot to the table for us. She's a really good defender. Our big thing in the non-conference was trying to get her to, you know, get a better feel and understanding of the pace and uh, not to get too deep on dribble penetration and, and pick that ball up early and just some things like that that really needed to come through game experience and watching film and her watching Mama and KG go through it and being open-minded and learning from it. But it's been really cool to see her continue to – embrace that and uh, she's a fierce competitor don't let that smile fool you uh, she wants to win at everything she does which uh, elevates her and our team which is really really good what do you tell I mean you've had a ton of, of local kids whether it be like immediately in Como or just like kids from in-state like Mo and Sierra you know the Porters the Cunninghams what do you tell them about handling kind of the mental aspect of playing at home playing for your home state school family and friends in, in the building every game that kind of stuff yeah you know it's really cool I think you just know um, oftentimes at a young age if that's what you want or not because you know people think that local kids are the easiest to keep home but they're not a lot of local kids want to go away and have that experience of being off to college. And so when you can get the local ones, you feel really blessed because you know that's going to just continue to create a support in our community, a local name, uh, familiarity. Um, but I think, um, you know, like I said, they, they, they understand what that's going to be like. Uh, they experienced it in high school and then they understand what that's going to be like uh, at the college level. But that's something early on I think that they decide that you know what, that's something I want to embrace and be a part of. Avery, when you talk about the biggest win that you had and, and kind of that thing of kind of a difficult moment for you freshman year, it, everyone that we've talked to so far, we've talked about your motor, they said that you just <laughs> stop. I mean, was it difficult to keep that motor during that during time when you're kind of sidelined a little bit? Um, I kind of feel like when you're sidelined, it adds even more kind of fuel to the fire because, like, you know, Watching other people play when you just want to be out there so bad makes you know coming back You feel even more I guess like energized and ready to go because you know You kind of see what you missed and stuff like that yeah, and Obviously against Auburn you had that shot in the lane I think we've we've seen that shot thousands of times at Rockford But to, to be able to do that kind of kind of feel that confidence now Where's your confidence at now going in SEC play? Um, I feel like it's continuing to grow. I think each game kind of helps you get a confidence booster and, you know, every day in practice just trying to prepare the best I can. We talk all the time, like, you know, your preparation is kind of what allows you to be confident in those moments. So just continuing to, you know, whether that's watching film, scouting reports, getting my shots up, you know, if I know I'm prepared, I know, like, I'm ready for whatever minutes or moments come my way. We'll take one or two more. Robin, with two back-to-back -back SEC wins and then the most recent AP, not receiving any votes there. Is that something that you guys talk about at all at this point in the season, or does it kind of fuel your fire at all at this point? Um, you know, we, we haven't talked about that in the locker room. Uh, I don't plan on talking about it right now. Uh, for us, it's one game at a time to really be where our feet are. Um, you know, I think so many times it's easy to get caught up in things like that, and I think coaches, like, we, you, know, you it, it absolutely, you can use it uh, as a motivator. And a lot of times we take things what we want to use to to really challenge our players and get them motivated. But I think for this team, this year, where we're at, we're, we're just really got our blinders on and we're about being where our feet are today in practice and taking it one game at a time. We know what we want March 13th to look like. We've talked about that a lot, right? But it's your body of work and every game is one opportunity to make a mark on your resume and so we're not gonna get too high and we're not gonna get too low and we're gonna try and stay present and just really focus on the things that we can control and that's today's film session in about 10 minutes and then after that it's taking the court and just trying to build from there. Um, when you kind of look back at the week that was for you and with, with everything going on, what, what was that like? I mean, what was it like kind of finding out, you know, you couldn't be back in? What was that timeline like for you? Um, <laughs> it was really bad. Um, it took me a while to call my parents and, and tell them because it, I kind of didn't believe it. I also thought that there was a chance that I could make it, but uh, then I knew. Um, so I told them and they were there for me and I... I was with my boyfriend as well, who helped me a lot. And then I think the bigger thing was call Coach P and, and have that conversation <laughs> because 
I'm not a really emotional person. I try to keep my feelings to to myself and just I knew just having that conversation was just going to make me cry and I didn't want to. Um, but I, I feel like the moment I called her, I realized how much she loves me and how much I, I love this team. And I was like, I'm going to do whatever I, I can to, to be there for you guys. And as soon as I got my visa, I was like, I, I'm taking a flight right now. I don't care how long it is. I don't care what it takes, but I'm going to be there. And it was tough to be on the game and realize that my body wasn't there 100%. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? This is a basketball game and my body is just jet lagged. Um, but I wanted to be there, and I did everything I could to help my team, and I was just so happy. Even if I was on the bench, I was like, this is what I want. I mean, I love them. And then when we, got, when we won, I, I didn't realize until two minutes later, because I was still jet lagged, so I was like, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> but it was, it was amazing just to be there. And, and like, it took that long for you to realize it, how much it, I it, love it. you? No, no. Oh, it's it's yours. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> how was the match after the game, though? What? How was the nap after the Oh, she was knocked out on a plane. She didn't even know we landed. And we're like tapping her on the shoulder and she's barely coming to. We're like, oh, we need to get this time adjusted. I'm better now. I'm better. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Thank guys. you.